So today we're talking about connecting with your past lives and then bringing all of that together to look at your current life and help have a better for you, you know, for you, your better current life. Why do we do it this way? You know, usually like there's, you can do life mapping, you can do current life path reading, you can do path life regression. Why do they connect? The past lives that come forward are generally the ones that feel closest to you in this life. Like some of you, you've had hundreds, over a thousand past lives. Like everyone who's here, you know, you're not in your first life. If you were, you wouldn't come here. You're not in your 100th life because people that young have no interest in this. They're in a whole different area of, of you know, working on their, their karmic experiences. So just by the nature of you being interested in this and saying, I think this will be good for me, know that you are definitely an older life. You have well over 100 past lives, if not much, much more. So just accept that. Accept that and don't argue with yourself about it. <laughs> Which means of all the past lives you've had, why do certain ones come forward to you? There's going to be a few reasons. One, that life may have died in trauma or just like been really distressed. So they never return to your soul, which means from that life to this one, every life is like haunted by this ghost of a past life that just bringing energy below what you desire into every single life. Um, or they may just be hiding, but they may come forward and this is your chance to help them. Like they may just like having no effect, but you will find by helping that life, it will raise the overall frequency of all your lives from that life to your current life. I had a life, the first time I did a past life regression, the First life that came forward, oh my God, everyone else in the room was like, Queen of Sheba, it's a knight for King of this court. I was a, a shepherd with many sheep in a mountain. I was like, I sucked. <laughs> like, I came out of the rest and I was just like sobbing. It was this um, fellow who had been born horribly deformed. Like, think of the hunchback of Notre Dame's uglier brother. And um, his mother died in childbirth. And everyone hated him from the moment he was born because he killed their his beloved mother. And he was, like, hideous. So he, he spent his life as a slave. He wasn't even given a name. And every single day of his life, he was hated. He was abused. He was ignored. He was treated as the disgusting thing that like if you abuse him then you release your bad energy into him you know like it just terrible and the horrible thing was he was so loving and so brilliant and he died this horrible death and then they just like threw him in with the trash you know it was just like awful and this was like i don't know three four thousand years ago and he's been hiding all that time because he knew the, his soul would reject him. So he's just been hiding unlovable, unloved, and yet craving love because he was a truly noble person. And um, so I got to experience his life. I was like, ah, this is terrible. And then after the past life regression, and everyone's like, it's amazing. I'm like, this is awful. And I asked um, my teacher, it was Heinel, Heinel Pap, yeah. Um, I asked her, like, what am I supposed to do with this? And she said, you need to do a meditation where you go to a sacred place and meet with him and um, 
ask, get to know him, befriend him, ask him what he wants and needs. So I did, we ended up meeting in this like fire circle in an ancient cave in a grove. And we, we met many times. And um, one of the first things, you know, I asked like, what do you need? And he said, I would love to have a name. And I was like, oh, you poor guy. And I was like, what name would you like? And he said, Dudley. And I was like, what? <laughs> Dudley. And he was familiar with the Dudley Do Right Canadian Mountie cartoon with Penelope Pit Stop or whatever. And he said, this man was gorgeous and he was a Royal Canadian Mountie and he was a cartoon and, and everyone loved him and he, everything worked out for him. And, and he was a noble person that people treated as a noble person. So I'm like, okay, Dudley. And giving him a name started his healing process. He said, I would just like to be with you with your guardians and your guides and your you know mentor like my non-physical crew and watch over you and see how you live your life with all these love connections and so like all of my crew like embraced him and eventually like after a few years he's like I'm good I'm going back to our soul thanks <laughs> and and he's there and the thing is he's no longer malformed he's now just pure energy and it took him a while like i watched the transformation as he was releasing his need to cling to how he looked and how he felt to releasing bit by bit by bit until he returned to his energy form and he was like wow this is so nice <laughs> i could have done this thousands of years ago so a past life regression it's not always like, oh, I was Cleopatra. Um, it it can be um, someone from you, someone you were in a past life needs your help. Maybe they didn't resolve their karmic lessons, and they're like, can you just if I stick around with you for a while, I can re finish resolving. Uh, a life that can come forward that feels like they are of benefit to you in your life. Like, you're working on X issue, and I'm very good at X issue. Or you're going to be going up against people who will, like, try to deny you your ability to do X, Y, or Z, and I'm excellent at X, Y, or Z. So you may do a past life regression, and you're like, I was a thief and a pickpocket, and I died in a gutter, drunk, and someone stabbed me. And I'm like, but what? But this guy's guy or woman, whoever this person is like happy. They are like, that was a great life. And I'm like, so what skills did they have that would be useful for you? And they're like, well, they were silver tongued and Teflon, you know, until eventually their their love of living the biggest, fullest life did them in. You're like, okay, so there you go. That is they can help you with that as you're going through and they're like, oh, my corporate job, you know, or what have you. So no matter how you think or feel of that person as they live their life, they will have something that will be of benefit to you in this life. That's why they feel connected to you. They feel like they're here to like be part of your guardian team. Um. Another reason a past life might come forward is they just think you're really cool and they want to introduce themselves or they're very proud of the life they lived and they want to share it with you. Um, you know, there's so many reasons, but there's always a frequency connection. If it's a life that you have in this life, no connection with, and believe me, each of you have had plenty of those that life would only come forward way in the future after you've done many past life connections. Like for me, I remember my entire existence, but most of my past lives, they're not connected with me in the here and now because we got nothing in common. Did you have a question? Um, yes. I do that. Um, 
to me, it sounds like when you talk in one past life, it's like another person, but yet it's still me, right? Mm -hmm. um, kind of like not a that is a great question. So yes, your past lives are other people and they're you. So here's how I see it with, and I spend a lot of time with souls and past lives, but this can be a unique, like if a different way of seeing or experiencing works for you, go with what works for you. Okay. Each of us comes from our soul, and our soul is pure energy, intelligent, emotional, curious energy. If our souls weren't curious, none of us would be here. Our souls enjoy learning and growing and evolving, or we wouldn't be here. Um, when it's time for a new life, your soul like each of you, your soul plans your life. My soul plans my life. This will be based on, you know, lessons that your soul wants to learn or someone else asks you to come to life to help them. The first contract anyone makes, I mean, it might not be, it's like the first legitimate one, like when you're assigning the documents is with your birth mother. And if for some reason someone else needs to take over parenting, that person will be the second one. Like say if you're put up for adoption as a baby or you you know right away your mother's going to be, you know, a terrible mother, but your next door neighbor or your aunt or your grandmother will step in. These are the first contracts. The father contract may or may not be relevant depending on what DNA, genetic stuff you want or how close you are or aren't to your father uh, because face it, the birth mother is more important in your birth than the birth father um, not to discount the men <laughs> but and then there's uh, whom you you want to have interactions with and meetings with what karmic lessons you want to learn it's how much of your life is for self, for personal growth, how much is for service, helping others either one-on-one -on -one or a community or the planet or global mandalas and energy. You know, there's all of this is taken into consideration. If you're a very young soul, you're basically here for self. After many lives, you're here for self and service of like one or two people. Like, think about your first day on a job versus when you're ready for retirement, you know, right? <laughs> and I know most of you are like, I'm ready for retirement. I'm tired of incarnating. <laughs> your soul may or may not agree with that thought. But I saw it run through multiple of you here. Um, so, like, for me, my soul said, okay, Benita, it's time for you to be born. Uh, I've planned you out. These are your major relations. These are your karmic lessons you need to learn. Uh, these are where you're going to be helping others. These are like major times and places that you agree with to be at at certain points to coordinate with certain people. Like it's all mapped out. And then um, I'm born. And well, I remember like my entire existence and in this life I've been given lots of visions of what's to come but generally but I I don't know my life path any more than anyone else because if you know your life path you're not going to learn your lessons you know we learn by getting dirty and mucky and falling on our face and then getting up and cleaning ourselves off and going forward so if you know, oh, there's that like toxic relationship I'm going to be in. Okay, I'm going to run through it. <laughs> you have to learn the lesson. Even me, I have to learn my lessons. We all have to learn our lessons. Usually the hardest way possible. The quicker you learn your lesson and you're done with it, the easier it will be. <laughs> The more you're like, I'm determined to make it work, even though I know it can't work. 
the harder it will get harder until you have no choice but perish or learn your lesson. Or like, oh, now I got to carry that karmic lesson to the next life. Or hang out with the next life and like finish working on my karmic lesson while they're trying to live their life and I'm dragging them down. So then each of us eventually we die. None of us are going to be alive for eternity in our fleshy forms. And you return to your soul. So here's the thing. Each of us, when we return to the soul, we don't stop existing. Every one of you is going to be eternally existing. But you're now one of the collective that is your soul. Your soul is your soul's energy and every single life you have lived, as well as all the energy waiting to become lives. And, you know, that just because they haven't been born yet doesn't mean they're not a viable entity already. So we're each, like you hear people, I channel a collective. I mean, like me. <laughs> We are each of us a collective. When you connect with your soul, you're connecting with your personal collective. So does that answer for you or make you more confused? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Do you ever come to where your soul is like, okay, I, this, is this is the end? Yeah, I'm ready to ascend. That's what ascended masters are all about. Because... These people like Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, Mother Teresa, I mean, she was, you know, Amma, the hugging saint. We have many ascended masters who are here in our time and in our history books. When you're in your final life, that's like um, your PhD thesis, you know, they have their final life program. Now, it's not that in order to have your final life, you have to do like global healing. The names I just rattled off, they chose to do global healing with their final life. But there are plenty that their final life is completing all of their karma and feeling complete within themselves. Um, the book, The Afterlife of Billy Fingers by Annie Kagan totally recommend reading because um it was her brother billy's final life and in his in his life he was like a drug addict and a con artist and he just brought misery to his family and then after he died his soul started connecting with his sister now it was billy's soul not the whole collective soul because she was connected with him and he explained to her the whole purpose of his existence. So he lived his life the way he wanted for the completion before his ascension. But Annie took that ball and ran with it. And she has given tremendous knowledge and healing to it's a great website, great book. Fingers. Fingers. Oh. Yeah, he was a massage therapist. Oh, okay. Sense. Yes. Uh, so, uh, those of you who know my dog, Lord Snaggletooth, this was his final life. He's ascended. Um, he was supposed to die before I met him. But when my cat, Maddie, died prematurely, Maddie's soul actually went to Snag and said, you can't die. You need to finish what I was supposed to do. That's a whole, whole story. And so Snag spent three months in the animal hospital, came back to life, and found his way to us. And he completed what had been Manny, Maddie's job to do. And then when Snag was in his final few weeks, and Every morning, he's sleeping in my bed on his little pee pad, is his, you know, and I'd wake up like, is he still alive? And his soul would pull me, and he was, it took him quite a while to do his final passing, but he was so comfortable. He just was like, if this is it, I'm just going to relax. And he was just so filled with love. It was amazing. And 
I remember there was, uh, when this all first started, I was doing my daily meditation and I got pulled in to his. And he was sitting in a circle and around his circle was every life he had ever lived. And any of my lives who had lived with his lives, because he and I have had many lives together for thousands of years. Um, any of my lives that were next to any of his lives that were there. Um, and there were a few other you know, people, but and he was starting his life review. I'm sorry. I'll turn that off. He was starting his life review process, but not just his life of this life, his full existence review. And the last time I really saw him was after he had passed, um, I would go look for him. And I found him in the, the realm of the Ascended Masters. But it was like they had their whole hierarchy. He was in like the kindergarten equivalent. And I remember um, this Buddha who was floating around on a cloud came to me and he's like, you can't come back here. You, you're just not divine enough. <laughs> oh, snag ever come to me? And he's like, he needs to go do his stuff. You have to let go. So, um, yeah, I'm turning off my ringer. All right. There. Uh, so, yes. We do reach a point where we're done with this and we go on to other, other things. Some of you, you're not originally human. Some of you are originally of another group, species, dimension, frequency, collective. Uh, some of you are of human. And you're like, if you look at your soul, you're like, I have a life where I was hanging out with the angels or where I was in the dimension of the color green or I was in a place that was just sound. like. Just because you're of one origin doesn't mean that is all you have done. Sometimes when I read for people and I see their souls, it looks almost like a wagon wheel. I see their original soul and then extensions to all the kinds of souls they've been. Now, that's not all the kinds of lives they've been. They've been like, oh, you've been a Lemurian for a while. You've been a frequency of sound for a while you've been you know in the angelic realm for a while you've been you know i like pick your dimension pick your frequency pick your collective um and human is just one of the many they've done but their human soul is as important and viable as all the other souls so you don't know what you're going to find and when people ask me, like, so what happens? What's the point of evolving, evolving, evolving? As I see it, once upon a time, before we were just one and nothing, and it was always and never. There was just like, and then um, those that we call like God and Gaia, you know, connected. And everyone developed identity. And that's when you got like frequencies and dimensions, but there was not physical yet. Um, but you had all of the divine, like, you know, and angels and this and that and groups and collectives. And then Gaia decided to create physical reality. Source is creating souls. So the source is creating energetic reality. Gaia is creating physical reality. We come along, big bang theory. And as I'm sure you know, there have been multiple big bangs before this one. We're not the first. So at some point with everyone growing, evolving, growing and evolving, learning, we're all going to be at the point where we have grown and evolved as much as we will, and we'll start reconnecting. And then at some point, I don't know if we'll return to everything and nothing, or if it will evolve to something different. I don't 
know if anyone knows, <laughs> but it's all part of a great experiment. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So really, if you think about it, if we're just here to learn lessons, grow and evolve, and eventually reconnect with our souls and our souls to our, you know, soul families and our soul families to our collectives, to our frequencies, any mistake you make in this life, any screw up, any of the stuff that you're like, oh, I'm such an idiot, oh, you know, demeaning yourself with, it's kind of irrelevant. Our soul wants us to make mistakes. Our soul wants us to like screw up and have adventures. Otherwise, our soul will just remain a soul. So value all your mistakes. Value everything stupid you do. Value all the times you say something you're like, why did I say that? That's so embarrassing. You know, every time you put your foot in your mouth and then fall forward on your face into a gravel pit, value that honor yourself for that because your soul is thrilled i guarantee and again in the great scheme of things you know i mean i beat myself up over dumb things i said like 30 years ago but i'm the only living person on our planet who even remembers that so why don't i just let it go and value how awesome I am. Well, little karmic lesson in there that needs to be learned. Because once you learn your lesson, you're no longer abusing yourself. And we will talk about that in the afternoon when we review our current life. Does anyone have any questions? I have one. Yes. You said the morning, and that reminds me of um, supposedly our training Mm -hmm. And when I was told that, I Googled it. And I can't find any reference to any of these planets. So I'm trying to figure out how to find out more information about them. Well, hopefully today you'll find out some. Okay. You know, your soul is your best resource. You know, um, and your soul is your absolute best resource to learn whatever you want to learn about yourself. You know, a lot of stuff, like if someone goes spaces out and information flows through them, it may not be in any textbook or website. And um, one thing that's very important, people get so hung up on, what was my name? Or what's my guide's name? Like, we really love our name. But keep in mind, that's just an us thing. Many, they're like, I'm pure energy. What do you mean, what's my name? Yeah, so these naming of things, it's just like when you connect with any of these guides, guardians, collectives, past lives, and they give you a name, they're giving you a name that has a frequency for them to connect with you. It may not actually be the name that they have. Like, if you talk with your angel and your angel's like, you may call me whatever. They don't say my name is usually like, you may call me whatever. And then like three, four years later, that same angel that you've been working with every day says, now you may call me whatever, because you've developed a higher frequency connection. So start becoming more aware of the connection and what's within this then what is it called? And then what they say, spirit sight or third eye, it's not about seeing or hearing. It's about receiving information and letting it unfold to you. So if I use my spirit sight, it doesn't mean I'm a visual person. It means something has come in Maybe something whispered in my ear. Maybe I did see something. Maybe something downloaded and just open. Maybe there's a little wisp of information floating in. Be fully open and receive and let it share with you. Don't put the parameters on it. And you'll find sometimes um, someone will give you a name. And then when you look it up, 
it will take you on a search that gives you the information that you need. So the name was the doorway to what you need. Um, okay. 